Let me introduce Antonio Robustelli. He's a sports scientist. Uh, he's a, a trainer in uh, different uh, team sports, such as uh, volleyball, basketball, and uh, also he's trained uh, uh, track and field athletes. Yes, and uh, what else? Oh, um, my main goal uh, in the last years is uh, football and track and field but i have worked with uh, a lot of sports last olympics i had in Bra brazil i had uh, three athletes competing in uh, uh weight uh, which, which was? archery oh, archery uh, weightlifting Ashwaron. and track and field okay, and i have to uh, to add that uh, you were a trainer in uh, a famous fencer because my speciality is fencing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay she's an olympic champion and uh, so he has uh, a lot of experience in different uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, physical preparation, specific uh, 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 physical preparation for different sports. And this is very important. He can uh, share with us uh, his, his experience. Okay, and uh, now he's going to show us uh, a special case. For example, if uh, we don't have any equipment, what are we going to do? Okay, so Antonio, go. On. Okay, uh, thank you for attending the, the workshop. Uh, are you okay with English? Someone? Okay, perfect. Uh, the workshop, we only have one hour, uh, so uh, it will be mainly practical. So in 10 minutes, you will need to stand up. And uh, there will be two main parts of the workshop. One part, I will show you some assessments for uh, the a quick evaluation, mainly observational uh, assessment of food function and biomechanics. And I will show you uh, some exercises for improving food strength and mobility. But we cannot start with, uh, without a short introduction, okay? Uh, how many of you are, uh, just to have a feeling of my audience, how many of you are involved in uh, sports actively in terms of coaching other athletes okay okay and uh how many of you when designing training programs for uh for your athletes uh how many of you uh think about specific foot uh exercises no okay Two. Okay. Um, foot uh, is uh, probably the most overlooked aspect uh, in uh, training design and physical preparation, but it is probably the most important part of the human body. And uh, I will explain you why. Uh, okay. Uh, in biology, we have, uh, we especially in um, in uh, foot biomechanics and in foot complexity, structure uh, is going to affect function, but function is going to affect structure as well. Uh, here you can have a quick taste of why foot is important. Uh, it is important to note that when talking about foot training, we are not talking about isolation exercises because we are talking about a structure that has 26 bones, 33 joints, 20 muscle and 107 ligaments. Uh, the major joints of the, of the foot and ankle complex are uh, the we divide the, there is a pointer, I okay, perfect. We divide the foot in three main uh, parts, the forefoot, the midfoot, and the rear foot. Uh, and we have several joints. We are trying to go this part faster to, to go directly to the practical part. These are the forefoot. Uh, joints and this is going to be probably the most important joints of the of the day which is the metatarsophalangeal joint which is this one 
These two are the uh, joints of the midfoot. And these are the joints of the rear foot, subtalar and ankle, talocleural joint, which is the ankle joint. This is the anterior view of the, of the foot with the talus. This is just a quick uh, view on the muscle uh, of, the, of the foot and uh, lower leg. This is the anterior view, okay? Uh, there is a difference between intrinsic muscle and extrinsic muscle. Uh, intrinsic muscle are the muscle that are inside the foot. And extrinsic are the muscle that are located in the, in the leg, in the lower leg. This is the posterior view and the lateral view. Anterior view of the foot and view of the plantar aspect of the foot. Uh, the foot has a multifunctionality because uh, most of the athletic movements involves high level of acceleration, decelerations, change of directions and all these high uh, elevated loads imposed to joints and surrounding structures of the foot, highly elevated loads. This graph is from a very interesting paper from uh, Wilson and Kylie, which show you the three main elements contributing to the robustness of the foot and ankle complex. I will explain you in detail later. Uh, why the foot is important? Because uh, despite the major muscle groups like quadriceps, hamstrings, need a high level of activation to manage and generate propulsive force in running based activity, their contribution to the momentum of the... Uh, are you familiar with the term momentum? Okay. Uh, their contribution to the momentum of the whole body can be only expressed through the interaction with the ground. With no interaction with the ground, we cannot express this high level of force. Uh, one of the main uh, characteristics of the bipodalic movements is that the high forces that we are going to generate through the dynamic repositioning of the limb in the flight phase need to be transferred uh, between body and ground and this is important through the relatively small surface of the foot and foot is the only interface that we have with the ground so why we don't train foot do you think it's enough to train let's say uh, for strength to train lower body exercise without focusing on the foot. Uh, when impacting uh, the foot with the ground, uh, we, assist we receive high impact forces and decelerations. So uh, the foot is acting at the same uh, time as a brake, as a spring, as a bearing, and as a rigid level for transfer of forces between the dynamic movements of the body and uh, uh, rigid and immobile environments. Uh, this is uh, interesting, this graph, because for um, these three elements, complexity, biotensegrity and degeneracy, are all the three contributing to the creation of the robustness of the foot and ankle structure. Uh, complexity because foot, you know, with all the muscle and joints and ligaments is a very complex structure, not only from a biomechanical point of view, but even from a sensory point of view. Uh, degeneracy is uh, the ability uh, to the foot is a modular system. It's not to be uh, viewed as a unique 
system, but it's comprised by several systems that each of these systems can have a different uh, level of mobility, of flexibility, and, and this is called degeneracy. The biotensegrity is the ability to resist forces of deformation. All these three elements are contributing to uh, the robustness of the, of the foot. Uh, okay, let's start with the protocol for assessment of the, of the foot. We can go here. Yeah, the, the, the rest is finished. Okay. Uh, most uh, um, here we have uh, three different section for uh, for assessment of foot and ankle: the structural, functional, and performance. Uh, this is mainly an observational ass assessment, and is this. Uh, a way for coaches, trainers to have practical information on the field that they can use directly. Yeah, you can use this directly, let's say, from tomorrow and understand what part of the foot and ankle complex need to improve. Okay, uh, there, has, there is no need of any particular tool for this type of assessment. Uh, we just need a one uh, goniometer uh, a mobile smartphone for uh, taking picture because for structural assessment we just need to take a picture of the anterior part of the foot lateral view medial view uh, here's there is an error because there is a mm, uh, also the posterior view okay this is just to take to have a track of how the structure of the foot is is changing over time okay so we are not mm, there is no need to show the 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 picture we are sticking now to the functional part of the of the assessment we have uh, six uh, assessment into the functional part the first one is the lunge test the lunge test is uh, um, um, is able and uh, allow us to measure the range of dorsiflexion of the ankle joint. Normally, this is to be, um, has to be performed um, o on the wall, okay? But we are going to use this. Okay. Uh, take off the shoes. Okay. Okay, uh, we will need a tape measure, okay? Now we don't have, but it's not, we have, okay? Ah, yeah. Uh, did you already measure uh, the dorsiflexion of the, of the ankle? No, okay. Someone is already measuring the dorsiflexion of the ankle? Okay. Okay, let's start with the setup of the test. Okay, please. Uh, we just need to... Uh, come here. This is the wall, okay. Uh, I think that probably you are not able to see from this position so it's better to stand up ah it's not mandatory we don't need to have the exact value here of the dorsiflexion so okay by putting the hand here okay as a reference you can put your foot in this position okay this should be in line with the tape measure so we have the tape measure and we put the tape measure here close to the to the to the foot okay by starting from the wall okay in this position uh, 
the the other leg is resting and we can even uh, help us uh, by using the, the the hands on the wall or on the on the leg but I prefer on the wall okay you start like this when touching the wall you need to put the foot slightly uh, it is important that uh, the heel should be stay in contact with the ground all the time okay so we need to stop when the knee is slightly touching the wall Yeah, just slightly touching, okay? Not like this. Now I have still enough space, so I'm going like this. It's too much. Okay, this in this position, okay, we can measure the distance from the wall to the uh, to the toes, to the big toe, okay? Uh, normally, each uh, each centimeter is uh, three point six degrees. Uh, it's corresponding at three point six degree of dorsiflexion. Okay. Uh, please uh, repeat the test. Okay. This is just a reference for starting. Okay. So you can put your hand here and start with your feet in this po in this position. Okay. Perfect. This is just for okay okay we need to put the uh, the tape measure here from the wall okay yeah okay go back flex your knee okay perfect okay the heel is rising now okay so what you need to do move the feet okay are you slightly touching or are you okay the heel is still on the ground here we can measure the very poor dorsiflexion so you need to work on this okay but it's important to measure the uh, contralateral limb and check the difference between left and right side okay uh, just Let's perform another one, okay? Uh, are you a coach? Or, uh, uh, no. Uh, I'm studying. Okay, okay. Uh, what would you do for improving uh, your uh, ankle dorsiflexion mobility? Are you s slightly raising your heel? So you just need, okay. Okay, in this position we can measure the the distance between the wall and the uh, and the big toe. Remember, uh, each centimeter on the um, on the tape measure is corresponding to 3.6 degree of uh, ankle dorsiflexion. Okay, perfect. Uh, another, the second test is the measurement of the uh, uh, dorsiflexion of the metatarsophalangeal joint. To measure the metatarsophalangeal joint, we need to take off the socks as well. Okay. Uh, who wants to start? Yeah. Okay, you can sit on the... Okay, uh, the metatarsophalangeal joint, just for... Remember, is this one between the metatarsal bones and the joints of the, of the toes, of the proximal... This one. Okay, and this is uh, one of the most, if not the most important joints, especially for propulsion in running based sports uh, it's important to measure the dorsiflexion of the metatarsophalangeal joint because 
if we don't have the enough degree of movement into this joint, uh, we are going to affect uh, the propulsion phase in running. And this is going to create uh, other uh, mm, problems with the all the lower kinetic chain. And if you attend my uh, 10 minutes lecture at, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the evening, you will, you will know why. Okay, how we measure? Uh, okay, uh, we should have at least 40 degrees of dorsiflexion uh, into the big toe, uh, at least, but it is not enough. It's the minimum requirements for sedentary people. But if you are an athlete and you are going to perform acceleration, running-based activity, you should need 50, between 50 and 65 degrees of dorsiflexion, okay? How we measure dorsiflexion? This is a simple um, uh, goniometer. Okay. We need to put the center here. Okay. On the bone. Yeah, on the bone. The orientation is this toward the malleolum. Okay. This way we need to put in this movement, okay, the maximum, and follow with the goniometer. Okay, and look at the value. The value is 55, 56, okay? And this is a good uh, range of dorsiflexion. Uh, it is important to test um, left uh, and right side. Why? Because if the dorsiflexion of the, of the metatarsophalangeal joint is limited, uh, you will notice a early heel rise on the affected foot. And if we have different degrees of dorsiflexion, one foot is accelerating faster than the other. So there's no balance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, I want one of you performing the measurement on maybe on, uh, on the same uh, guy. Who wants? Okay. Okay, uh, important to the orientation of the, of the goniometer. Look at this. Okay, okay. Be sure to reach the maximum You can read the, the measure. 50, oh, it's quite the same between left and right side. So um, there is no imbalance between left and right side. So uh, this is uh, this type of um, of uh, measurement and assessment uh, can be uh, how to say uh, performed also with technology. Uh, after performing this type of test, manual test, I usually test the athletes with foot pressure mapping technologies by putting some sensorized insole into the shoes and performing some running task, whether it is a starting from a uh, normal gait and then shifting to running at various intensities to see if there is a, uh, there is a difference in uh, acceleration of the of the foot between left and right side. Can I ask uh, one question? 
Yeah. Uh, uh, can, can you hear him? Uh, okay. If there is an imbalance between yeah. the right and left, what can we do to fix that? Uh, we are going to do the ex exercise later. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, the first ray mobility is the uh, is the next test. Why we are going to test the first ray mobility? Uh, have you ever thought about first ray? I think no. But uh, if we go back in years, uh, this is a book from 27. Uh, it says the first metatarsal is the shortest, by far the strongest and most important weight-bearing point in the forefoot. This is the first ray. What is the function of the first ray? To resist ground reaction forces, to keep the medial longitudinal arch integrity during the, uh, the mid-stance supination phase. It allowed the first metatarsal head to plantar flex uh, during the heel uh, rise and lift. And this is very important because provide medial stability for propulsive phase rigid lever mechanism. How we can assess the, the... This is mainly an observational test. We don't have values, we don't have uh, goniometers and tape measure. Uh, but we are just uh, f going to feel the level of mobility of the first ray. Uh, yeah. We have a problem at that point. Yeah? Okay, but you know the reason. Yes. Yeah, okay. And you are doing something for uh, restoring the movement of the, of the motion of... I'm trying to limit the ah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but you are, you are running? Uh, I can run. I, I don't have a problem. Except uh, I can't run barefoot like now, but uh, with my shoes I don't really have any problem. Yeah, but you don't need to... But you don't need to okay. run barefoot, so no, yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> okay. But if you are running at higher intensity, I'm not talking about jogging. If you need to run and sprinting, you feel some difference between the affected and the unaffected side, or not? Yes. As a subjective yes. feeling, yes. pain there is a difference. and pain. Uh, sometimes mm. uh, the bone is actually sticking out. So yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I need to uh, show you how to feel this movement, okay? This is much more of a s palpation skill, okay? Uh, Want to try you again? Okay, take off your socks again. This is a type of test that uh, is mainly performed in a uh, medical setting for orthopedic podiatrist, but he does great value in sports science as well. Okay. As you can see um, on the picture there, uh, to perform this test, we need to isolate the lesser digit, the four, okay, under the metatarsal heads with this, it's a sort of sandwich, okay? So that we can block this. With the other hand, we are going to put the, the finger under the metatarsal head, below the metatarsal head, and fill this one and one, one, this is the first movement, okay? The plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. It is, is more blocked in dorsiflexion, respect that plantar. So the movement is down and up, down and up, down and up. And this is just a sort of a palpation feeling so that you can have a taste of how this 
first ray is moving okay perfect the the fourth the, the next test is uh, the test of the intrinsic foot muscle uh, this is another observational test uh, why it's important this is another old uh, old-fashioned books uh, of uh, 64 um, uh, man and inman say that intrinsic foot muscle play the principal active role in the stabilization of foot during propulsion if you uh, no okay. <laughs> 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 uh, we're talking about propulsion propulsion it's the same word as propulsion because it's uh, you can understand that it's one of the most important movement in athletic uh, development uh, in running both in uh, uh, long distance running and in short distance running uh, one of the tests that we perform there are three test observational tests that we can perform uh, one is called the doming the short foot if someone is familiar with the work of Vladimir Janda uh, Janda says that the short foot uh, exercises is uh, is able to uh, provide uh, overall stability to the whole body because of the improved sensory aff um, information afferent information the plantar uh, fascia of the foot uh, come here uh, the short foot mm, is simply the ability to raise the arch by keeping the heel and the uh, uh, first and f uh, and fifth metatarsal head still on the ground without lifting them okay and without curling the toes so, the so yeah you should raise the arch mm -hmm. okay and this way shortening the the the, the length of the foot so the but but not in this position yes okay <laughs> so I'm raising with my knee or with no no you should stay like this in this position okay. and you should actively trying to push the uh, heel f first and fifth metatarsal head into the, the the ground and this way trying to raise the arch without curling the the toes okay. it's not so easy yes, I can yeah that I can especially if it's the first time that you are doing this uh, i like to consider this this more like an exercise le than like a test okay focus do you think look at look at the feet do you think is moving the the arch the medial do you feel some movement into this part yes here are you contracting this muscle? Uh, not exactly. Uh -huh. but, uh, below my foot, I would say. This okay. Below my foot. Okay. Because I'm trying not to curl my toes. Yeah. And uh, still trying to raise it. Like okay. Say it. Okay. But it's uh, how can I put that? It's uh, like putting two forces uh, in different directions. Okay. So okay. Okay. Uh, okay. This is the first type of observation we need to. The second one is. This is very funny. Uh, you should move this four yes. toes by maintaining, by keeping the big toe on the ground. And lift, okay. Try to lift the lesser digit, okay. okay. But you are raising the, the heel, the, the, the big toe. So I'm trying to yeah. And the observations to be done is not only its ability to ra to lift the, the toes, but also any type of common or compensations occurring behind in the calcaneus. That's something that you, you can learn, from what I can understand. 
Yeah, also. If it's a new, it's like a new type of uh, stimulus for yeah. for y your uh, nervous system. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Try. Okay. The third one is the opposite. So, put the lesser digits on the ground and try to lift the big toe. One of the compensation is that he's trying to lift the opposite foot to help him. Yes. Okay. So, uh, this is a question of neural input because you notice that he has a good dorsiflexion, uh, passive dorsiflexion of the of the um, of the metatarsophalangeal joint, but he is not able to control this from a neurological point of view. So this need, uh, Practice. yeah, okay, good. And this is another one. Uh, I don't remember. No, you need to stay barefoot. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, the the last two tests are uh, the the easier. Let's say it's the toe walking. So which is an easy walking on the hill okay uh, what we need to look at we need to look at the movements uh, when performing this test we need to look at the movement of the hill the calcaneal adduction because uh, when shifting the weight on the ball of the foot on the toe the um, the heel should slightly go inward, slightly, to allow a press stretching of the calf muscle for accelerating the, the, the movement in, um, in propulsion. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you should perform the walk mm -hmm. by keeping your knee locked. Yeah. So I'm right here. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, okay, take a look at the movement of the heel, of the calcaneal. You should walk more on the toes. Okay, not on the bottom. Not on the metatarsal, yeah. Try again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Look at the movement of the of the hill of the calcane. It should be slightly inward, like this. So this is what feels when. How was the movement of the of the hill? Straight or slightly inward? Slightly. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Uh, and this is another... Um, this is going to provide us with information on the function of the tibialis posterior as well. Uh, Something... Uh, yeah. Uh, if my heel was neutral now, yeah. and we have an inward direction, uh, what that would mean? That I don't have flexibility or I have... Uh, uh, a problem in my... No. Uh, uh, problem in my... <laughs> You are still okay if <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you can. <laughs> and uh, no, um, if um, it does, it means that uh, you don't have the ability to. Um, do you remember the the graph at the begin at the very beginning? This one. Okay. Yes. One of the three of these three aspects: degeneracy. What does it mean, the genesis, if you remember? The foot is a modular complex. Yes, it's okay. A lot of okay, okay. Okay. Uh, and you are not able to differentiate between forefoot and rear foot in this movement. And I will explain you later because there is a specific tool for training this type of body function. Which is called, uh, which is called blackboard. Mm -hmm. 
okay? There is one pad for the forefoot and one pad for the rear foot, okay? Look at this movement. You are going to create, uh, to create, uh, to let you understand. Pull. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, if we uh, pull on the both sides this towel, uh, it is soft. Uh, go. Okay. Let me. Okay. It's soft. Okay? Yes. Twist on uh, one side. Okay. Twist, twist, twist. Okay. Stop. Now? Stop. It's the same? No. Okay. Uh, did you visualize the concept? Okay. The same apply during the transfer of forces in uh, propulsion. I will explain you later with the blackboard. Okay. Uh, The last one is the heel walking. Uh, why? Uh, the ability to walk on the heel reflects the strength of the dorsiflexor muscle, tibialis, peroneus, brevis, extensor. And uh, sometimes the dorsi weak dorsiflexor can be associated with poor flexibility and function of the gastrocnemius and soleus uh, complex, which are uh, fundamental in running. Okay, uh, normally, how w w w we look at the duration. If he is able to walk at least for 15 seconds, okay, we are uh, okay. Okay, you can try from here to, to this part, but you should stay for at least 15 seconds on your heel. Okay. I don't. Mm, uh, you can arrive. I think that it's longer in diagonal. Okay, it's better because we need to reach 15 seconds. Okay. <laughs> okay. Start. Okay, stop. Uh, what do you think? He is able to walk on the on the on the hill or not? Look at this image. Look at this picture. Yes, my toes were falling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more than the other. Uh, my right. No. My right toes were falling more than my left toes. The left. Try again, try again. Start in this position, okay? okay. The maximum extension, uh, dorsiflexion, sorry. Okay, this is the maximum? Yes, I can, I have left my knee. Okay, my okay. Go walk. Okay. Okay, uh, now, because you know, the the yeah and you try to compensate in a by raising the the lesser digit of the of the of the foot okay in this way but probably this is going to uh, create some rotation at the knee uh, it's not only about my quadriceps yeah you feel firing more more quadriceps muscle okay okay uh, Okay, and this is um, the last test. Uh, for performance, I mentioned heel mobilization capacity and forefoot mobilization capacity. For testing this, we need to use this type of tool, which is called Blackboard. Uh, but uh, let me ask, how, uh, how many time we have available still? Ten minutes? Five? Okay, okay. So let's stick to the to the to the king of the exercises okay okay uh, for uh, one of the main exercises uh, I already showed you is the 
short foot. Okay? Probably this is the short foot is uh, fundamental uh, not only from a strength, mobility and biomechanics point of view, but also from an overall sensor, sensory input point of view. Okay? Uh, two of the tools that uh, I mainly use for foot training are the Toe Pro, which is this device, and the Blackboard, which is the other one that it's more complex and we don't have time now. But if you want to, um, if you want to learn more, you can find on. Uh, uh, it is a company from uh, Germany uh, who has uh, patented this device. Is a wood uh, plate. Uh, the Toe Pro is uh, a device that trains the muscle of the foot and the ankle in a lengthening position. And this is the, the main uh, positive effect of this system. Uh, it works the toes, the, um, the posterior muscle of the, um, of the lower leg, and the lateral, the, the muscle of the outer leg. This thanks to the 10 degrees tilt, both lateral and f uh, on, the, on the surface. So, uh, this is a very hard exercise. Uh, we need to try this uh, and we need a wall. Okay, we can come here. Uh, I don't know, are you able to see? Maybe. Mm. Uh, here. We can use this. Okay. I don't hear clapping. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, before button. starting, before starting with exercising here, we need a, a warm up. Okay. So for warming up, you should put your um, toe yes. here at the very beginning. Touching or no, so over the, the, the device. Okay. This one. Both. Okay. Okay. Try to put this one as well. So on the okay. 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 Perfect. Okay, now you don't have to touch the wall in front of you. You just need to sli go slightly forward by pushing with your toes yes. on this platform, okay? okay? Push and go slightly Do You need to stay aligned, okay? Slightly forward, okay, go. When you start losing balance, you can go back in the starting position. What you, what you, what, what are you feeling? Uh, okay, fall forward. Yeah. My toes need to squeeze. Okay. The curl, so okay. I have uh, control my movement. Okay. Uh, try to go uh, forward again and hold the position for three seconds and go back to the starting uh, position. My maximum range. Uh, yeah, yeah, your maximum range. Without oh, without lifting the heels. Lifting the heels. Yeah. Okay. So I'm okay. Uh, three seconds hold. Yeah. And back to the starting position. Okay. Normally, for warming up, uh, 15, 20 repetition are good. Okay. Okay. Uh, the exercise. The exercise is uh, very hard. Um, you should put your uh, f feet at this in this position. Okay. Okay. Yes. With the toes pushing here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Push hard with the uh, with the mm, with the toes yes. and try to raise the arch like this the, uh, like opening my legs 
Yeah, but you need to open the arch, okay. not legs. Okay, try to open, okay, and push. Push outside, okay? Rise the arch, okay. In this position, you can even put your hands here. In this position, keep raising the arch. Start raising the heel. Start raising the heel. Rise. And while rising the heel, while rising the heel, push inward. You are still pushing outward, inward, inward, inward. Okay, okay. Hold the position and outward again. In the same height without yeah. falling. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and go back. The movement should be two seconds up movement, two seconds down, two seconds up. In the up phase, you should push inward. In the down, you should push outward and touch the, the ground with the heel. It's a great way to say that you have to balance it this way. Yeah. Because I can feel my right leg is not have the same balance. But uh, you are feeling some muscle uh, some specific muscle firing you are only feeling uh, the muscle of the foot or also l uh, up on the kinetic chain um, it's a difficult to say I would say in the lower foot but I feel some movement ok ok but that would be because I don't have the experience to explain it ok uh, last time um, last uh, progression ok Try to put your uh, toes here. Okay, here. Okay, perfect. Okay, start with the same movement. Push with your toes. Okay, in outward, raise the arch. Okay, two seconds, lift your heels by pushing inward and two seconds back by pushing outward. It's easier or it's, uh, uh, it's more I difficult? Say it's easier, but it tires me quickly. Okay, yeah. Uh, in in uh, comparison to the uh, previous exercise. Okay. Um, keep in mind that uh, normally a protocol is to try to build up to full series of 25 repetitions. Which is, <laughs> you can understand, yes, you can understand how it's difficult. But it, this is going to challenge uh, the muscle in a way that you cannot in, uh, with other type of exercises. Okay. And most important thing is, is that you are uh, feeling the, yes. the, yeah. I can uh, feel my leg. Uh, the, the, the main goal is to work out, to build up to a uh, maximum of four series for set of 25 repetitions. Uh, normally, the rest periods That's between right. sets should be keep low at maximum 30 seconds. And you should start again, because uh, this is going to help with, um, uh, especially in uh, uh, people uh, that need to uh, uh, return to play, that need to rehab some injuries. It helps with, uh, by keeping the 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 rest periods low it helps with the uh, process of remodeling tissue okay uh, yeah the main goal is normally uh, four sets of 25 which is very challenging it's very challenging uh, you are uh, okay you are uh, a coach you are a active uh, okay but are you training you, do you train okay uh, in Ah, oh, okay. So it, uh, it's not. As I assume that it's not a weak guy. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but he. As Tell the truth. I don't have problems. It's, it's difficult. Okay. It's not something easy. And if I miss the repetition. Okay. So uh, the the main point is uh, foot training n should not be something uh, easy like uh, sitting on a chair and doing something like this, 
okay we need to put resistance as well uh, into the into the foot to challenge uh, some muscle that uh, we are not uh, going to even because we are staying all day with the sh uh, with the feet into the shoes and this muscle are sleeping all the all the day so we are going to provide the foot with new inputs and new uh, a new level of strength and mobility and acti activation of muscle uh, i'm sorry that we didn't have time to to try this one which is very very uh, nice but uh, you can check the website and learn more about the 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 benefits of using the blackboard uh, into your training uh, okay uh, if you have other question i'm here Uh, do we have any exercises that uh, without the toe pro, like with a towel or a pillow? Yeah, mm, you already know. If you ask me about the towel, you already know it because it's the most common exercise. Uh, and you can use uh, a, a towel, okay? And you can try to grab the towel with the uh, with uh, with the with the with the fingers, okay? And try to put more strength. Uh, I like this exercise, but in my opinion, is a light exercise that can be used as a general, in my opinion, mobility routine, but not for strengthening. There are more effective uh, methods for strengthening uh, the um, the for strength. Another inter uh, interesting exercise, uh, especially for the metatarsophalangeal joint, is the so-called toe waving. Uh, and I will talk about this toe waving later because I have a, a speech about uh, metatarsophalangeal joint. And but you can find some information if you look on Google about the toe waving exercise. I want to ask you about uh, the relation uh, between function and structure. You said something in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, can we think uh, uh, for an a age for small children uh -huh. and I'm talking only uh, the anatomical condition from structure to be better functional condition. Okay. I'm interested in this path. Uh, Is it uh, right to think about that in the yeah. adolescence or... Yeah, th th the problem is that we... Uh, grow up with a predefined structure in terms of anatomical structures of the foot which leads to a specific function of the muscles but why sometimes function is um, uh, affecting uh, structure because we are uh, sometimes losing a lot of uh, fundamental movements during growing uh, and now the situation is worse than in the past because uh, it's uh, difficult to find uh, children uh, walking uh, barefoot, walking on the on the sand, maybe for ten for two weeks a year. Okay, uh, but they are wearing shoes. They are uh, playing. Uh, yeah, they are playing uh, at with the iPhone. Okay, uh, and they are losing the ability to move. And this way the muscle are losing their function and and this is the the way that function is going to affect the original structure it's a question of uh, yeah it's the interaction between the purely biomechanics and the sensory inputs that we and we also we are using shoes and we are working all the day on uh, rigid surface and we are losing the the, the foot is not uh, for this we need we should walk on uh, soft surfaces so it is going to affect posture uh, but also the eyes the eyes are not uh, um, structured for absorbing all the type of lights coming artificial lights in which we live, artificial lights uh, from the electronic devices, and this is going to affect the the, the, 
the function of the muscle at the foot as well and this is going to affect the structure so it's like a, a dog that bites his uh,